shattering from the top, engulfed by banana peel plumes. These were no ordinary implosions. The Twin Towers each consisted of three multi-story buildings set on top of one another. To sustain the weight of so many floors, the sky lobbies had to be extra heavily reinforced. Watch a big squib coming from the sky lobby band. A powerful blast produces what is called a shock wave. Explosions generate extremely high compressional waves that exceed the limits of surrounding air and space, creating a violent force. When the debris started coming down, I was right in the shadow of the South Tower. I was less than 100 yards away. Everybody saw the video over and over again of that cloud chasing people down the street. It was like a tornado. It was like being hit by a wave at the beach, but the wave was intense, it was hot, it was noisy. It was like getting hit in the back by gravel. Rocks, like somebody had picked up handfuls of rocks and was just throwing them at you. And the noise kept coming and coming, and one second I was running, and the next second I was flying. I was just, um, I had no control over my feet, no choice as to what direction I was going. I, I was in the air, and it seemed like I was being followed by, by, this, by this tornado, this tornado of darkness. The South Tower fell first. This is the shockwave blast as it rocks the tower next door. As the buildings fell, they darkened Manhattan, filling the air with billowing clouds of dust and ash. What produces these huge, scudding, cauliflower-like masses of slowly moving dust? A volcano. Pyroclastic surge is the term for low-density debris clouds that sweep across land and even water in the wake of a volcanic eruption. Note the dust clouds pushing between the buildings and over the Hudson River, typical of pyroclastic surge. Volcanoes produce the same kind of thick scudding ash and debris following a massive release of energy, a huge internal explosion. The surge left a blanket of dust on the streets of Manhattan like a winter blizzard. Fine dust particles hung gray in the air. The towers were literally pulverized, rendered into ash. What kind of energy could transform a building from steel girders and concrete into millions of handfuls of superfine ash? Did the towers fall or did they drift to the ground in clouds of powder created in midair? Would jet fuel fires and collapsing floors result in this otherworldly scene? Filmed from space, a white blue spire rises upward from ground zero, a military term for the site of an atomic blast or nuclear detonation. On the southern tip of Manhattan, surrounded by water, huge retaining walls were built below the World Trade Center to hold back the ocean and Hudson River. The bathtub, as it was called, held seven levels of parking garages, maintenance rooms, and the New Jersey PATH train station. After September 11th, the three-foot-thick slurry walls were found to have shifted up to 18 inches inward. These walls are coming in. These walls hold back the river. So if these walls cave in, this place is going to get flooded out by the river. Let's think about this. 
A pancake collapse should have left the foundations in place. They had always borne the weight of 110 floors, but something happened in the sub-basements to disrupt them. All the collapse had gone down to track level, so we had 60, 70 feet of wall totally unsupported. What kind of force could have dislodged so many stories deep underground? The ground continued to burn. You'd get down below and you'd see molten steel, molten steel running down the channel rails, like you're in a foundry, like lava. The crews kept spraying, but still, underground, molten metal flowed and the fires burned on. You see how this debris is still smoking? That's when the fire's gonna still burn it. Eight weeks later, we still got fires burning. Steel-toed boots is one of the biggest things. Out, still on the rubble, it's still, uh, I believe, 1,100 degrees. The guy's boots just melt within a few hours. In November 2005, physics professor Stephen Jones of Brigham Young University published a 25-page treatise on the collapse of the Twin Towers and Building 7, applying the laws of physics to the official story, from an interview on MSNBC. As we read in the FEMA report, it says here, and I put this in my paper, of course, the best hypothesis, which is the only one they looked at, the fire, has only a low probability of occurrence. Further investigation, invest, uh, analyses are needed to resolve this issue, and Professor, I agree with I am that. sorry that we are out of time, and I, I'm not sure that Whoa. Uh, you've uh, One other thing I want to mention okay, about... Okay, if you can hit it, uh, hit okay. it quickly. All right. there, there, okay, here we go. Molten metal in the basements of all three buildings. Right. And yet uh, all scientists now uh, uh, reasonably agree that the fires were not sufficiently hot to melt the steel. So what is this molten metal? It's a direct evidence for the use of a high temperature explosives such as thermite. Thermite produces uh, molten iron as, a, as an end product. Okay. We appreciate your coming on, even okay. if I don't understand right. your theories. Uh, okay. We appreciate your trying to explain them. Thanks. Professor Jones barely got in his mention of thermite. An incendiary used by the military Thermite is a compound of iron oxide and aluminum, which when ignited, sustains an extreme heat reaction, creating molten iron. In just two seconds, thermite can reach temperatures over 4,500 degrees Fahrenheit, quite enough to liquefy steel. This is thermite melting the engine of a car. We know that open-air fires cannot burn hot enough to melt steel, but metal had melted at the base of the towers. The second product of a thermite reaction is aluminum oxide, visible as white smoke. Did thermite arson occur on September 11th? Watch this very bright substance pouring from the 81st floor of the South Tower. and white smoke appeared at the base of the building. Would this be aluminum oxide, the byproduct of a thermite reaction? Appendix C of the FEMA report describes sulfur